The following video shows the procedures involved in manufacturing a wax-based trial complete upper denture. The clinician's prescription in the form of a record block, i.e. bite block, registration has been articulated against a natural lower dentate cast. The setting positions of anterior and posterior teeth as well as the carving and finishing of the wax flanges is shown. In this case, the record block information has been provided and the blocks and master casts have been mounted on a hinge articulator. Before we start, we transfer the recorded dentist prescription from the record block to the sides and base of the articulation. We must measure the centre line, the incisal level, the labial fullness and mark the canine lines. If for any reason the articulator's screw settings are accidentally changed, we can use this recorded information to recover the position. Once the prescribed information has been accurately transferred, we remove the equivalent of one wax tooth with a wax knife. In this case, we remove the upper left central. If the block is too thick, you may trim away some of the excess wax, leaving only enough to hold the artificial tooth in place. We heat the destination area of the tooth and position it accordingly. If we position the incisal edge of the central incisor at the correct level, then it should set the long axis angle. This is dictated by the manufacturer. We need to check from a side view that the neck of the tooth is closer to the ridge than the incisal edge. This will provide the natural inclination of the tooth. Since we're opposing a natural lower dentition, in this case we're setting the teeth with an edge-to-edge -edge relationship so that the incisal edge of the upper will contact as well as possible the incisal edge of the lower anterior teeth. Once the central is set in position using molten wax, we move on to the lateral tooth and then the canine tooth. Again we do these one at a time, cutting out a piece of wax, heating the space and placing the tooth in position. We must check the incisal edge of the lateral against the natural lower and that its neck is set in further than that of the central. This is a more slanted tooth. The canine is an upright tooth and again we check the incisal edge. In this case it is slightly lower down the centrals and laterals. With the anteriors now set on one side of the arch, we can repeat the process to set their counterparts on the opposing side, taking good care to try and follow the curve of the wax record block. The dentist will have carved the block as an indication of the labial fullness. We can use dividers to check the marks that we made and ensure that we're following the prescription accurately. When all six anterior teeth are in position, we can ensure that they are firmly fixed by running a small amount of wax around the necks and cingulum areas of the teeth. Next we move on to the molars and premolars on the upper left. For the premolars, we again remove just enough wax to hold the tooth in position and with a hot knife we soften the wax in the setting area before placing the tooth. We should try to follow the arch from the canine towards the centre of the ridge. In this case the occlusal position is set by the opposing lower tooth. Moving on to the molars, we follow the same routine.
In this case, we try to fit the neck in slightly more. This will drop the palatal cusps and raise the buccal cusps, introducing the curves of Spee and Monson where the molar teeth start to curve as they move towards the condyle head, and also from buccal side to buccal side. When the molars and premolars on this side are in place, we once again ensure a good fix by running a small amount of wax around them, and then repeat the process for setting the corresponding teeth on the opposing side. With all the artificial teeth in position and the occlusion checked, we should also recheck the measurements that we made before the setting process began, in order to ensure that the prescription has been followed. Now we build up additional wax in any areas in which it looks lacking. We can over wax the arch in order to leave ourselves more to carve so that we can attain the required curves. It's essential during the waxing up process to incorporate curvature so that the muscles of the tongue and cheek help to hold the denture in place. We add plenty of wax over the cingulum to the palatal cusps, smoothing off the palate to attain an even thickness. We also build up wax around the necks of the buccal and anterior teeth. Using the Lecron carver, we can work our way around the necks of the teeth at an angle of about 45 degrees, emphasising the gingival margins. Using the blade at a safer angle, we can then use it to remove any excess wax from the surface of the teeth or the interdental spaces between them. Moving on to the palatal side, we maintain the wax right up to the palatal cusps so that the tongue doesn't have any ledge of natural tooth to play with. We must remove any wax from the cusps so that there's no material to interfere with the occlusion and then expose the cinguli of the anterior teeth. Moving our attention to the base, we can re-emphasise the junction of the hard and soft palates and expose the outer edges of the buccal model and anterior region. We must now identify the areas of muscle attachment and cut out a V-shaped notch to allow them to move freely when fully extended without dislodging the denture. Next, we must round off the buccal and labial sulcus in order to leave a thick, rounded edge. The wax denture can now be refitted to the model. Since we now have a well defined sulcus edge and gingival margin, we can use the wax knife to sculpt the flanges to a slightly concave shape. This should be done on both the buccal and anterior flanges.
Again, using the Lecron, we can festoon between the teeth, slowly widening the curvature to provide a nice shape from the neck eminences down to the interdental spaces. By sculpting the wax in this order, light will be deflected in different areas, and this will make for a more natural finish on the final denture. This whole procedure takes a little time to complete as you move around each tooth, but when complete the finished product should have a natural look with subtle bulges over the necks of the teeth, hollows in the interdental spaces and a slight curvature between the bulbous necks of the teeth and the gingival margins. At this point we can clean the wax with a bold bristle brush borrowed from the polishing lathe before drawing a fine flame briefly across the surface of the wax. This flaming process causes the wax to melt and cool very quickly, leaving a natural smooth surface to the denture. Drawing the flame across the wax sometimes causes a small amount of wax to run back onto the teeth, so finally we can use the Lecron to remove this and re-emphasise the gingival margins. We now have a completed upper wax trial denture that can be removed from the model. The relevant items should now be replaced onto the articulator, ready for delivery to the clinic.